everyone. Uh, it's so great to be here. Uh, I was here last year um, sitting right there. I was so excited. I can't believe I'm here. It's so nice <coughs> to not see you all <laughs> because that would make me even more nervous. But, um, so today I will talk to you about uh, pipes and um, what they are and what has changed. Uh, my name is Aisha Gül and this is uh, my Twitter handle, Aisha Gül Yonet. And um, I work at Autodesk, uh, their A360 uh, web platform. Uh, we are building um, 3D application uh, sharing platform, uh, which is really cool. So pipes are another, basically, a class, a service that allows us to uh, transform our data and display it the way that we like it to. So I use it a lot. I actually noticed how much I use it after I started to talk about pipes. Um, I really do use it a lot. And I asked myself the question, why I'm using it so much? Uh, one of the reasons is that um, our application is really big, and uh, we have hundreds of uh, directives, and um, we are a huge team working for different country. And we have different backends. The data is coming from a variety of sources. And that is a huge challenge uh, to keeping the data in a contact way. So uh, one very useful thing uh, I use pipes for is to um, not to change my data. So I don't, uh, for anything that I need, uh, I don't have to change any of the attributes of my data. I can just write a pipe uh, and use it anywhere in my application that I wanted to. So pipes um, are used to be called filters. Um, they're more flexible and more performant now, but there are so many things that hasn't changed. For example, the way we use it in our HTML. Uh, so as you can see, we have a data binding, and uh, we have the cool new date um, pipe, and uh, we can just use it the way we used to use it. And we can also give it an argument to even more refine the way we wanted to um, display uh, our date. We can even get it from a user input, and we don't have to decide it on the spot and um, change it uh, dynamically. The um, new improvements to uh, filters, pipes, today is also being more e uh, being able to um, nest them together one after the other to um, make it look the way you like it. But that's not all. So <clears throat> we have some new additions, like the replace, that allows us to create some regex expressions and replace anything that we want in our text, which is, I think, really great. Uh, so to be able to do that, we have the expression that we are binding to, and then uh, we have the replace pipe. And we can give replace pipe the arguments of the pattern, the pattern that we are looking for. And the um, second argument is the uh, replacement. That could be a string or a function that will replace. <coughs> so here I'm uh, replacing everything, Angular 1.5 with um, 2.0. Uh, hopefully that will be very soon, all of us. Um, so we're all familiar with uh, trying to debug our data bindings and then uh, trying to display it on our uh, view and seeing the object object. Uh, thankfully, we have JSON pipe now. Uh, we can display a JSON object uh, on our HTML, and it makes debugging so much easier and um, joyful. We have a few other uh, cool pipes. One of them is the internalization and um, uh, we have percentage and all these cool stuff. <coughs> these additions are great, but uh, we also lost some. So we don't have the filter filter anymore. We don't have the sort by anymore. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but you can't write your own, and you can't blame anyone for it. Um, <laughs> which I did. Um, so it doesn't take long before we start writing our own um, custom filters. Uh, and you know there are some reasons that we lost the uh, sort by and um, filter filters. Uh, one of them is the uh, 
aggressive minimization of the code, so it allows that, uh, but also it was uh, very much misused. And um, it was a lot of discussions in my in group as well, uh, how we need to use it, because we have a lot of data to use and it's really hard to um, sort everything. So let's talk about how we can write our own pipes and we can customize it as much as we want to. First thing that we need is the uh, pipe decorator uh, to give our uh, metadata to our class. And then the second thing is the pipe transform interface, which uh, we will implement the transform method on it. In our decorator, uh, the first thing that we give is the name. So this is the name that we will be using in our HTML as a filter. And then uh, we are um, implementing the transform method. Um, and the transform method takes uh, at least one argument, which is the input that we wanted to change. And also, it can take as many arguments as you want. And you can just um, use them with semicolons. Uh, and the transform methods obviously has to return a result that you want uh, to be displayed in your HTML. Lastly, uh, what we need to do is uh, in our components, uh, add the pipes um, to our component metadata. Oh. So we almost made our um, Filter. So here I have a list of uh, files that I'm filtering through. So uh, some of them are owned by me, some of them are shared. So I'm um, filtering the owned by me right now. And I do have, um, well, yeah, owned by me filter is working fine so far, so good. Now what I want to do is uh, just add an, another folder. And uh, since it's created by me, I'm expecting it to be there. But it's not um, fun stuff. So I go back to all files. It's there. It's uh, right at the bottom here. I go back to own by me. It's there now. But it wasn't there when I first put it. So what happens? Um, Angular is, uh, has a new way of uh, watching um, for the change detection. Before. Um, before, in our current app actually, not that before, uh, we have thousands of watchers and anytime we add a new, um, new item, our watchers just keep increasing and that's horrible. Um, <laughs> so now with the pipe improvements, uh, we are being more careful about what we are watching for. So Angular, uh, as a default, doesn't watch for any changes. Um, directly. Well, it does, but for uh, reference changes instead of any changes to any length of data and any attribute. So what that means is that <coughs> we, have, uh, we have this new concept of pure pipe, which is uh, stateless. So <coughs> again, anytime your reference changes, we are changing, um, we are looking for your changes, but if your reference is not changing, we are not changing anything. So <clears throat> what can we do to make this work as we expect it to work? One thing we can do is to change the reference itself. So instead of um, pushing to my um, files, I can just concatenate and uh, create a new reference which uh, should fix my problem. So I have the add file method here and I'm pushing and instead I will concatenate. Oops, I have an error already. Hmm. Uh, begin oh, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I was going to just look at it for another five minutes. <laughs> so I refresh it and um, everything is working fine and then I add a new one and voila, it's there. So this is all nice. 
so far, but there is a problem with this. So we have to know where our data is coming from, where our data is being manipulated, and then we have to make the conscious choice of um, having uh, immutable data source. <laughs> it might become a problem uh, after a while, especially if your data is being used by, um, in many places and then it's coming, being changed in more than one component. And also, we don't want to change uh, our components according to you know, little details that we are using uh, in our you know, representation. We want to make it as reusable as possible and not want to specify it this way. <coughs> One other thing that we could do is uh, define our pipe as impure. Uh, we can do that by uh, defining it in our um, pipe metadata. Uh, all we need to do is uh, say pure false. Um, then Angular starts to watch for any change, I mean any change that happens. <clears throat> that means that anytime your mouse moves, any, when there's a click event, uh, we are still watching and then we are applying your uh, filter function to every data, which as you can imagine could be uh, kind of intense, especially if you have a lot of data, a lot of interactions, and it might slow your <coughs> rendering. We can still use this and um, make another change in our components. Uh, for example, we can change the way we detect uh, the change on our component level. We can say, instead of watching everything, we, we just watch the on push, which watches for only the input changes. So we have the pure pipes and impure pipes, uh, and impure pipes can have some um, performance issues and pure pipes are the default, but we might uh, need to change the way they work. Um, a very good example of a um, impure pipe is the async pipe. So uh, <laughs> async pipe allows us to look for any promise to be resolved or any observable. So instead of resolving a promise in our uh, component and then uh, assigning it to a variable and then binding it to our, in our HTML, we can directly have an observable as, in this case, the activities and um, just wait for it to have another data. If it's an observable, um, we are looking for the next data and uh, in between we are not doing anything. So we are just look, looking for the last change that happens and then we are just alter, altering the last data point. <clears throat> just for the um, you know, code saving point of view, it just doesn't look like a huge improvement, uh, but actually it is a, a huge improvement. This really works um, under the hood very um, performantly because we are not, uh, well, because of the reason that we are watching only for the last thing that has changed. And, um, and that's it for my talk. And um, this is my Twitter handle and uh, my code will be up on GitHub as well as my slides, I will post them. And thank you for listening.